Welcome to the 2023 season charge up. We're Robot in Three Days and I'm Barry. And I'm Gabriel. The name of the game is to get ranking points so you can get your team into the playoff. There are four ranking points per match and there are multiple ways to achieve them. One way to get two of them is to win the match, but there's more than just that. This year, robots will be trying to score into one of the areas is called the Alliance Grid. So if you're a team, just let you know that with cones, there's 12 opportunities versus with the cubes, there's six. So there's more opportunities to be able to score, which allows your team to be able to manipulate the playing field to your advantage. And let's say you fill up the bottom row and you're a robot that you can't even reach up very high. Well, you can score low and that's a nice, easy thing for you to be able to do. And after that, you could just be a, a piece runner. You could go to one side of the field, grab a piece and go deliver it to one of your teammates who can then pick it up and score if you have some teammates that are stronger in the scoring aspect than you are in the power grid. Let's talk a little bit about cooperation. This is something in the charge up game that we haven't seen in a while. So in the Alliance grid, in the very center, there's a cooperation grid flanked by two outer grids. The cooperation grid gives you the opportunity to score in the middle, which we encourage that be the very first thing that your robot tries to do because there is no negatives for scoring there. If at some other point they also score in the cooperation grid, that will bring down the sustainability bonus in order for you to get that much needed ranking point. Charge station is vital this year for autonomous as well as the end game. Reason being is because once you acquire 26 points on the charge station, it allows you to get one ranking point. It's vital for you to be able to make it to eliminations later on in the competition. As we learned in 2012, that slick surface on the top of that ramp is gonna make it uh, very difficult for some designs of drivetrains to be able to stay on top. Uh, here's a video of a 2012 robot that tried to use mechanic wheels and struggled. Rookies, we highly encourage you all to use the kit bot this year. It's effective at going over the charge station as well as traversing. What's really cool is that you could build it within a few hours and allow your drivers experience behind the glass, be able to practice driving, and also your programming team to be able to understand what they need to do for autonomous as well as the rest of the modes of play. What, what, what is this called again? Programming is going to be incredibly important this year. So what you want to make sure to do, get that robot to the programmers as soon as you can and let them start interfacing with it. In autonomous, you can get up to 12 points just by centering your robot on the charge station. So you could actually build a system to help stabilize that both for autonomous and then to actually be used with teleop later. In the situations where you're coming down to the wire, it would be amazing to have something that could actually auto stabilize. Now back in 2012, we saw a couple of teams do that. In this example, you can actually see the autonomous working with what's called a PID loop, which you may have seen elsewhere in the Segway. Take the time to research PID loops and gyros and see what you can come up with. There's some stuff on Chief Delphi and elsewhere on the internet that can explain the basic concepts. It's gonna be a really tight fit on top of that charging station. Here's a quick graph of what it will look like and even without bumpers on the robots, it'd be a tight fit, but of course they will have bumpers on them. So in the last 30 seconds of a match, you're gonna have robots climbing up onto this charge station and trying to make themselves fit, but check the rules because there's an interesting part in there that says any part of a robot that's suspended by any other part is able to to still be counted for it. Let's take a look back in 2018 with Team 148, the Robo Wranglers. They were able to use Velcro attached to their Alliance partner to help reel them in and grab onto that robot for a lift. Might be critical with this year towards end game, as well as with Team 254, the Cheesy Poofs, where they were able to use an arm to hang over the side of the ramp. You forgot about the essence of the game. It's about the cones. A place that first robotics competition teams can go to look for inspiration are the first tech challenge teams currently playing right now. They're also using cones this year. For example, you can use a grabber to grab from the inside of the cone to lift up and manipulate it as you wish. Another team was able to use a cow catcher. You can consider using McKinnon wheels to index cones or cubes up and down the robot vertically. Check out some of the Robot in 3 Days videos from 2018. Back then we had used compression and compliance wheels to manipulate crates and you can take those same mechanisms and apply it to this year. When you start with your compact robot inside of its envelope, it's gonna eventually need to expand. If you wanna to reach to the tallest part where you're going to want to score, that means you're gonna to have to expand even more. That means a more complicated mechanism. So we've already talked about the manipulator. Let's talk some about the arms. So one option is a P 
pink-like arm, a telescoping arm that will start off inside of an envelope and then reach out even further. Check out this robot uh, from a previous year. In FTC, the four-bar linkage is common for maneuvering objects from the ground to the scoring position. And the reason why is because it stays parallel to the ground as it moves up to the scoring position. Are the cones a metaphor? Well, yes and no. Thank you for celebrating 10 years with Robot in three days. Can't believe it's been 10 years. I mean, what's that? Two and a half careers for a high schooler? Yeah, and we're old. <laughs> 10 years of robot, that's 30 days of building robots. Uh, we know that you're all gonna come up with some amazing things. We're looking forward to both being at events personally and seeing what you come up with. Teams, don't be afraid to fail and fail fast because the sooner you guys do that, the faster you come up with these solutions or actually more time to come up with a solution for these problems. Like Dean mentioned earlier, you know, fall down seven times, pick yourself up eight, allows you to be able to still win. And you're not gonna come up with the right solution from the beginning. It's gonna take some time to figure it out. Good luck teams, we'll see you at events.